Hi everybody. So in this lesson, we're going to learn how to create an HTML page from scratch. And so to do that, we're going to learn what an HTML page is made out of uh, in this anatomy of an HTML page uh, write-up we have here. And then we're going to do some experimentation and actually build a web page. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So in the last um, lesson for this, which is the introduction and setup, you should have had Visual Studio Code set up. If you don't have it set up, just go ahead and go back to the introduction and uh, get that set up and then come back. All right, so what we're going to do here is go over what an HTML page first off. So this is a, an HTML um, a basic example of what it is. And uh, we're saying this is the anatomy of an HTML page. This isn't all the elements of it, but this is, these are the building blocks that make it up. So let's go ahead and go through these. Um, the first one is the doc type. Yeah, we we say it's HTML. It used to be a version thing before, where you know we had different uh, competing browsers and they were using different versions of HTML as it was uh, changing rapidly. But now uh, everyone's just pretty much uh, doc type HTML, and it just lets the browser know that this is HTML. This is you know the latest HTML that everyone else is using now. So render it this way, so that way it renders right. So always put that at the top of your document uh, of your HTML page. Otherwise, you might get inconsistent results. All right, so that's the very first thing that should be in your HTML um, page. Now, the next thing is the HTML tag element, right? So HTML is the container element, and it could have attributes. Um, we'll go and get into attributes a little bit later, but you can specify the language here is what's typically done. So it's just uh, uh, a less than sign, whatever the tag name is, and a, and a greater than sign to close it, and that's the opening tag. And then you know, we'll talk about other things that could go in this tag. And to close it is the same thing, uh, except there's a forward slash here in front of it to say that this is the end. So everything in front of, inside of the HTML page is in between these two tags. So the HTML open tag and the HTML close tag. All right, and so there's a couple other things. There's two main um, other containers in the HTML page. Uh, one is the head or the header where we put uh, non-visual components, um, information about the page. Uh, SEO, you might have heard of that before, search engine optim optimization. Uh, basically, you put meta information about this page to make search engines uh, able to find your page and information about it um, easier so it can index it so other people can find your page. Uh, other things that go in here, uh, title is typically used, and the reason for the title is it'll put it in the tab of the browser. Uh, back in the old days, the browser didn't have tabs, um, and they used to be in the title of the browser, but now it's in the tab of the browser typically. Um, so that's where the title uh, goes, and that's up there. There's some other things too, like the icon will be up here. Uh, other things um, that's popular is the CSS links to your style sheets. So there's a link that um, will go in here, and that will uh, tell the rest of the page how you want it to look. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later in other lessons. All right, and so that's the head. The next thing is the body. Now the body is where the visual elements go, or at least mostly visual elements. You can put script tags in there too. They're not visual, but they manipulate the visual. So um, they go in the body and that's the best place for them to go at the bottom of the body if for script tags. We'll talk about that in other lessons though. Uh, right now we're just going to deal with HTML elements and the HTML um, page itself. So here's the body and then here's an example. So the body can be empty and they'll just show a blank page and the body can have attributes, colors, you can style it and stuff like that. So we'll get into that a little bit. Um, so here's a couple of example tags. So here's an H1. There's H1 through H6, and those are headings. Um, like this title here is, is probably an H2 or something like that. That's probably an H1 up there. Uh, I'm not sure, though. I could just be using style sheets, which some people do, too. All right, so H1 is a heading, and then here's a P for a paragraph. Again, the, the tag is... Um, the, the brackets here and then the closing brackets. Now, not all elements have uh, closing uh, tags, like the inputs, for example, and we'll see those in a little bit. We're actually going to cover those a little in this lesson here. Um, so in between the body is where all the visual elements go, and that's pretty much what an HTML page is. Front-end um, <clears throat> coding is not very difficult. HTML is not difficult to learn. Once you have the tags down and the page structure down, it's really about making it look good. So it's, it's, the styling is important and the layout is important. Uh, tags are pretty easy, and we're going to show you a resource to get to the tags and the information so you know what they are. But once you know a tag, you pretty much know them all. You just have to see what they do and experiment with them. Uh, HTML is not very difficult to learn. All right, so that's how the document lays out. So doc type, HTML, and then inside of that you've got head, 
uh, typically title and then some other things and then body and then whatever other content you want inside the body and that's pretty much it uh, not much to learn there uh, other than the specific tags now we're gonna cover the elements just a little bit more specifically here um, so an HTML page is made up of HTML elements and HTML elements are made up of tags content and attributes all right so here's a basic uh, tag here We've got, uh, again, the tag name, um, a bracket that opens it, and then this is an attribute. So on a form, you can um, have different methods. I've talked about um, REST in uh, some of the other tutorials. Um, so the method is how is the data sent to the server? And in this case, it's a post. So that way the server knows they're going to be creating or saving some data here or um, making me do something uh, active that I have to modify some data. Um, so that's the value. So typically it's open bracket, uh, tag name, space, and then the method uh, is the attribute, and then an equal sign, and then double quotes, and then the values you want in there. Even if there's something that has numbers in it, you're going to put uh, double quotes around it. And then, of course, the end tag. Now on a form, there's going to be stuff inside it. Otherwise, this is an empty form. It's not going to show anything. You won't see anything. But again, the tag, it, the close tag for the, for the form is... Um, Pre preceding uh, forward slash and then the tag name and it looks just like that and there is not really much to learn about HTML I can't tell you anything much more about it other than actually um, showing you how to do it so let's go ahead and do that now all right I'm gonna switch to Visual Studio Code and let's go ahead and start a new one so I'm gonna hit command and to start a new page and then here's that um, that trick again I'm just gonna type the name that I want it to be and then hit command S to save and that's where I want it. I'll just let it save there, that's fine. I've got one there already, that's fine. All right, so now it's there. So what was the uh, beginning thing we needed to add? It's doc type, right? And so nice thing about Visual Studio Code, it's gonna help, help us out here. So we've got that going. So that's the first thing, always wanna put that there. All right, now we need an HTML tag to open this up. All right, and then we could put other things like English. Oh wait, it's Lang, sorry. I gotta spell it right with an L. So then lang and then equals en, that should be English. And then it finished the tag for us. I'm not gonna put that there and just let it do the default thing. Okay, so that's our HTML. So basically we're gonna build a hello world page right here and then we're gonna build on it. All right, that's usually what we end up doing, right? All right, so head, and then we're gonna put the title in here. And this will be a very, very bare bones page and let's do hello world and that's going to show up in the tab above when we run it okay and then let's do a body right and then let's do a h1 and let's do the same thing so one the tab is going to show hello world and two the body is going to give us a header with hello world in it so that is a very bare bones html page and again not much to it um, there's the basic structure, uh, kind of a minimal page. Let's go ahead and run this. So I think we can do right-click view in browser. Is that such a thing in here? Open an HTML browser. Let's do that. Um, I'm going to probably have to shrink this browser when it opens it. So let's go ahead and I'll shrink it in a moment. Okay, so you're seeing a white page until I shrink this. All right, let's get this into view here. Here I'm going to have to shrink it a little bit more. Okay, so now it's in view. Let's see if we can see that tab. Yep, here's the tab right here. So there's our title that shows up, and let's go ahead and manipulate that title and everything so it's just to show that that's what's happening. I'm just trying to size this for, um, for the recording, I guess. All right, so there's that. So let's go back to our page, and let's change something. Hello, mm, HTML. All right, and let's change this here to the same thing. All right, we'll go back to our browser and refresh. All right, so you see that that is actually changing that. So we talked about the header uh, before. So let's go ahead. There's six of these that I know of. And I think that's all there is. So let's go ahead and make these the six of them just to see what it does. So again, as we did in other lessons, we want you to explore and experiment. You can't break anything. So, and actually breaking things and trying to fix it is how you're gonna learn the most. So let's go ahead and see what that does. And you'll see 
that H1 is bigger, two, three, four. That's kind of neat how it kind of slims down like that. All right, so now, again, HTML is so simple to learn. Uh, layout and specific attributes and styling are the main things to learn. The tags themselves are pretty simple. All right, so let's go ahead and make something a little bit more complex because we need to so we can learn more because there's not much to this. Um, let's just do a paragraph just for fun, keep it more a little simple until we jump into it. This is a crash course. So we're going to jump in pretty um, more in depth than Hello World here. Okay, this is my first paragraph. I have trouble spelling. Okay, here we go. And there's a paragraph. Okay, so now let's get into a little bit more complex uh, pagery here. Okay, so one of the resources I like to use is MDN. So I'm just going to open a, a browser tab and I'm going to type MDN. We've used this in other uh, lessons before, so I'm going to do this and let's do ahead. Let's go ahead and make a form. Pretty complicated as far as HTML goes, which isn't very complicated. And you'll see that in a moment. So we're going to do HTML form uh, form tag. And the thing I like about um, the documentation here is it's you know consistent and it has examples and uh, we can see everything that's there. It's nicely laid out. The attributes that we talked about before that go in between the open tag and the, the beginning and the end, right? So these are all the things that could be in here. So a form is a more complex uh, tag. It's not visual, but it does something. It's very active. And you don't have to put all the stuff in it. You could leave it empty. And that's probably what we'll do. They have an example here that has an action uh, and then they have a get and this. So the action blank means it's really not going to do anything. Uh, so what we can do, it's not going to post to the server. Um, so let's go ahead and just copy this in and see what it does. It should look something like that. All right, so let's go ahead and replace our body here. Okay, so if we run this, we should get something similar to what they have. And we do. So that's how it looks. And so submitting this form doesn't actually do anything. We could put a username and email, and that's actually going to nicely ha has default validation here. So let's do it at Gmail, sure. All right, and so the default action, it didn't actually go to the server. So what it did is it actually did what it did in the old days is you could submit this as a get, and then it would go ahead and put it up here and send these parameters back to the same page on the server if that's where it came from, and it would do something with these values. Um, so that's a form. So let's go ahead and go through these because these have attributes on them and that's kind of what we're trying to learn here. So let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so what we have here is the form tag and then here's the action. So as far as an action goes on a form, it's not really intuitive, but what the action does is it's the thing that is the address of the server page we want it to go to or the server processor or server handler a RESTful endpoint. We um, usually refer to them as RESTful endpoints at this point. So POST um, is CREATE. So I'm going to create something on the on the server, maybe save to the database. PUT is updating it. GET is getting it. And you can get one, you could get many. Uh, and DELETE is deleting it. All right, so here's the attribute. So we're going to look for the action in here. Did I pass it already? There it is. So attributes for form submission. So action, this is the thing the, of the address where it actually gets sent to. So URL that processes the form submission. So that's how they describe it. Action, I don't know why it's called action. We should probably look that up someday. All right, so that's the, the URL that's going to go to. All right, and then the method, like we just talked to, RESTful methods, this one's a get. And then class. Class is one, an attribute that's used a lot. So that's for styling, for, H, um, for uh, CSS style sheets. And we'll get into that in a later lesson. We might touch upon it in here. Um, I doubt it though for the first lesson, maybe the next lesson. So um, class name, we'll get into that. But again, double quotes around this. So this form tag right here has three attributes specified. There's a lot more attributes as you saw on the MDM page, but these are typically the ones we would use. We might not style our, um, our form ex itself. We might s style the things inside of it rather than here, but it's a good example. All right, so the next thing, a div. So a div is really a non-visual component, it can be visual, um, <clears throat> but by default it has it's just a container. 
it um, contains other elements and it allows you to, to, to b block them off, um, maybe style the div and it'll style inside of it. You can put borders on divs, you can put backgrounds on divs. You actually, divs are a very, very uh, versatile uh, element. And, uh, but typically it's a container, it contains other things, and then you can do various things with it, with the div. So we'll get into that in more detail later. But for now, a div is a container uh, inside, and you can put other things inside of it. Now a label, uh, let's go ahead and go over to here on our um, MDN site, and let's just look for uh, these things. So, because div, let's actually get what the formal definition is. I gave you what my definition is. So it's a content division element. So it allows you to divide content. So it, it's like a container. Um, and if you use Bootstrap, which we will do in this um, course, is we refer to these as containers. And so did they uh, MDN up here. So div HTML element is the generic container for flow content. Okay, so that's what it is, is a container, and it can contain various things. And typically it's got a class. And that's probably it, unless you're um, going to refer to it, and then it might have a, an ID here in JavaScript. So we'll get into that a little bit later too. All right, so then they've got, it's got, you know, again, the attributes. Here's a, a, an example. And then down below we'll have a couple of things. It didn't actually talk about the attributes because the div doesn't have anything specific. Uh, to it. So it's got the generic attributes, which are pretty much ID, uh, title, which is for uh, hovering over things, and then um, and then the, the class name uh, for CSS styling. And you'll see that this one probably has a title. You see that hovering over it. Okay, so that's it. So divs don't have much. Uh, they just have the basic um, attributes. All right, so now let's get into a label. So label looks like it has a specific attribute. So let's go ahead and see what that does. So MDN label attribute. Uh, let's just see label element or label tag because that's probably gonna guess what we want. All right, so a label represents the caption for an input item, right? So an item in a user interface. So it can work for anything, but you put four on here and if it's got a name or an ID, it's gonna go ahead and say, okay, I belong to this thing. So if there's an error, you click on it, it'll take you right to this um, control here. So that's how that works. So, and we've got, let's see what kind of uh, attributes, and you could go ahead and read through this um, later on if you want to, but this one has attributes and it's got the four attribute. And it's got, um, it's an attribute for a single ID. It, one label should only go to one uh, element ID. So that way, if you click on it, it goes there. And so that's pretty much the only attribute uh, the label has. And then you can style it um, with uh, a class name. And then this is typically how it works uh, in this example. So here's a click me. So if I click it, it'll put focus here. Ready? Click. So that's how that works. So the label had this inside of it. If you do label four, it'll do the same thing. Oh, okay. They're giving us the example here, which that's why I love MDN because they have examples for, for pretty much everything. So this will do the same thing. Notice that the label is on the outside, like the way we have it in our form example that we pasted, instead of having it inside like this one. And this is pretty much the way they do it these days. All right, so if I click on this, it should do the same thing, and it did. All right, so then you, there's some other uh, more advanced topics down here, um, mostly about accessibility for um, uh, making the page for content readers and uh, stuff like that. So. That's how that works. And you're noticing how the documentation flows too. This documentation is important because you'll learn the HTML elements as you go. Um, they're very simple. Once you know what tags you use, you use them all the time, most of the time. And same thing with the attributes. Those are the only ones you use. So it's really easy to learn HTML. All right, so let's get to the input tag now. And the input tag is gonna have a lot of attributes. Let's see, MDN input tag. All right, so an input is the thing that users of your web page will type things into or click on because uh, they're checkboxes or buttons. Uh, so the, the input needs, uh, by default, it's going to do a uh, type text, but you need this type attribute to tell it if it's going to be something else. And this name attribute here is important if you're going to submit that form to an HTML page using the default method of the form. It uses this name method to say, okay, the name is set to this value. The phone number is set to this value. And that's, so these are the most two, the two most important attributes here, name 
uh, so that if you're going to send it to the server using the default form methods, it'll get there with the right name associated to it and type, so it tells you what type of input it is. Again, the default is text. All right, and so here's all the different uh, types. We've got buttons, checkboxes. Uh, it's got a color input. That's kind of clever. I haven't used this one before very much. That's neat. Um, and it's got a date. So nice examples over here of different things you can use. And just by simply putting the type on there, you'll get these. Oh, image, an input image type. I haven't actually seen that before. Okay, that's excellent. And so all these different types of things, and you've probably seen lots of these on other web pages. All right, now into the attributes. And there's gonna be a lot of them because there's, this input has a lot of functionality to it. Um, some of them accept focus, some of them accept files for download. Um, some of them have images uh, for accessibility so um, people can see something associated with that. And so here's all the different things that could be on there. There's quite a few. Um, we'll get into some of the ones that we use. Um, and let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so let's go ahead and experiment. Now they've got some of these for us to use, so that's kind of cool. So let's, let's see what happens if we click on checkbox. It takes us to this, and we get an example of checkbox. So let's go ahead and choose your monsters features. Okay, let's see what that has to do with anything. All right, so we rendered this form, so let's go ahead and let's put this inside of here, and we'll replace that. And sometimes the formatting's off a little bit. So if I save this, let's see what we get. And here's our page. All right, so choose your monster's features, scales, horns. We've got a checkbox. All right, let's go ahead and play with this a little bit. All right, so let's make let's go ahead and say we are going to just leave this as input. And so the labels at the bottom, input, we don't have the name anymore. So for scales, it's not going to know where to go to. But let's go ahead and do this anyway because we're going to try and break it. So notice that the it changed to a text box because that is the default action. We didn't or default input type. We didn't tell it to do checkbox. We told it to do nothing, and so it said, "Okay, you didn't tell me anything, so I'm going to assume you want a text box." So there's a text box, and then here's the label. So if I click on that, notice it doesn't focus in here. All right, so let's go ahead and put our ID on here and scales. Now if I click on that. We have no focus in there now. If I click on it, now we have focus and we can type in it. All right, so that's pretty much what they showed us uh, on their other uh, MDN site. All right, so checkbox is here. So that's how you can change things. So the attrib attributes are important. Uh, def definitions of what the tag can do. So this is how you customize each input um, element. All right, so again, HTML is kind of simple, not too difficult. Uh, what I want you to do now is kind of play around with the different attributes. Go on to MDN for these um, input types. So you can just go ahead and see them over here on the side. You can, again, type in MDN input tag, and you'll see all these. Just play with these and just paste them in to your um, web page. Let's go ahead and do another one for an example. So this one's interesting because it's a file upload. All right, so I'm just going to take it and put it into the page. And so you're just gonna use this, this template that we have set up here, and you're just gonna use the form and then paste this in. All right, so we've got body, we've got form, and it's just a regular form, and then we're gonna paste in the items that we see, and we're just gonna play with these a little bit. So I'm gonna save it, I'm gonna hop to my browser on that page, and then I'm gonna refresh. And now I've got an, uh, a, a file upload, and I could click on it, and then you see how it gets me to the file system to pick a file. Kind of cool, right? I don't have any. Um, I don't have any pictures on here. All right, so go ahead and play around with this, and in the next lesson we'll get into a little bit more uh, HTML uh, styling because that's really where we're going next. The anatomy of an HTML page, as you saw, is pretty simple. The elements, pretty simple. It's just pages made up of. Um, uh, header, which we haven't really touched upon other than title. Uh, body is going to have your visual content. We've got a form uh, that we're not really doing anything with yet. And then we've got the elements inside of it. And again, an element is really simple, just a tag and some attributes that customize it depending on what the type of tag is. That's HTML. Not too hard. Again, styling and layout are the most important things. And that's what we'll be getting into next. 
All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next lesson.